Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party review. In today's video I am taking a look at the Keith's Fantasy Club Phase 9A Gorilla Warfare King Gorilla. Uh, this is of course their interpretation of a masterpiece styled Ape Face, the Headmaster. Now this is the first Headmaster that KFC have given us. Now we have had Scourge with his Target Master, we've had Cyclonus with the Target Master, but we haven't had a Headmaster from those guys yet. Off the bat, this guy is big, solid and heavy. He does have a mighty big backpack section, but then so did the G1 toy. And uh, they have to hide away all of the triple changing mechanisms somewhere. I've seen some of the original depictions of Apeface. This is actually very close to some of his earlier looks. Uh, although in the actual animation itself, he does have a slightly more sleek design, but I personally will be displaying him in his ape mode. Uh, whenever I think of him, I always think of him being in his ape mode. Uh, the same with Snapdragon. They're doing a version of Snapdragon as well. And he's kind of always in his dragon mode. Uh, that's what I kind of love about them. The same with the other headmasters as well, like Mindwipe. Mindwipe, you just see as that bat, don't you? I don't very often recognize him as the robot. Now, King Gorilla does come with various accessories. First off, we get the large, clear, translucent display stand, which we get with pretty much every Keith's Fantasy Club and X Transbox figure. Now, we get two of these sound shocker rifles. Now, these rifles do uh, have an LED function with the LR626, I believe the battery is. You can press that down and this section here will light up. You get two thrust flame effects and his large, very G1 reminiscent lightning shield. Being a headmaster, he does, of course, have a detachable head and his headmaster is called Kongor. Uh, we can just flip those legs down, open those up. There we have little Kongor, just to bend up his arms. Now, remember, this is a pre-production sample, so hopefully if there are any errors or faults with these guys, they will be rectified for the final release. With mine, his little ball-jointed arm is just a fraction looser than what I would like. Uh, he does have little hands straight away inside those forearms. We have a pretty nice head sculpt, and of course we do have this section here for a itty bitty tiny Decepticon logo, and very much like the G1 interpretation, we do have his ape head mounted on his back. Now something that the other third party companies have failed to do when doing the Headmasters, the likes of uh, Fans Toys and the likes of Make Toys, when we add the headmaster on, we get a strength, speed and intelligence meter, which is incredibly nostalgic. That really does hit a lot of my G1 buttons. I think that's awesome. I don't really know why the other companies haven't included it. They've kind of done theirs as a nod. Uh, with like the painted up section as opposed to actually making a working one. Uh, so well done, Keith's Fantasy Club. You have nailed it. Another thing I like about little Congo there is he has metallic magnetic feet, so we can kind of stick him onto anything as well, much like you get with the old Diaclone figures. Now like most masterpiece style and inspired figures, we do have the tab on the inside of the hand where we can bring the gun section in. Now the lightning shield, I absolutely love. I love having that on the arm. That uh, really does bring back memories of the original toy, but there are other options as well. We can actually mount the lightning shield on the rear of Ape Face. We can bring the wing sections down on either side bring in our rifles and just put those up like so on both sides. We can then lift this section up and it's actually on a double hinge so we can bring in the wing pods, tab that into the rear of Ape Face applying pressure so it tabs in firmly and then bring this double hinged section back down. 
and then we can just lift up these wing sections and just fully extend those on both sides. And there we have them all kind of beefed up. It looks like something more from Transformers Victory or something like that, doesn't it? More than uh, Headmasters, but that's a good look for him. It's kind of really souped him up, ready to uh, battle, kind of drawn him forward to face somebody like uh, Gojinrai or maybe uh, Victory Saber. So, I mean, even if you're not a die-hard Headmasters fan, there's still a great deal of playability with this figure. Now here he is alongside some of the Season 3 strokes, Season 4 cast, uh, Cyclonus, Scourge, Weird Wolf, and Six Shots. I still need to get uh, Galvatron, I got rid of DX9, Galvatron, uh, I was going to try and get Sovereign, uh, I don't know if X Transbot are ever going to release Abaddon, I would like to get Abaddon because in my opinion he is the most cartoon accurate on paper, but uh, failing that Sovereign is definitely a very solid Galvatron for my collection. But as you can see, he does definitely look very in keeping with his fellow Decepticons. And as far as squaring off against the Nebulans and Autobots, I think, honestly, he could pretty much hold his own. Now, yes, he is bulky, and that backpack section is a uh, beast, but scale-wise, I think they all scale remarkably well. And as far as Headmasters go, uh, he's actually a taller than the standard Headmasters and Target Masters, uh, but uh, not vastly. Uh, I mean, it's no different, I guess, between somebody who's like five foot four with somebody who's got a friend who's like six six. You know, it's perfectly feasible. It's not absurdly out of scale, um, but yes, he is definitely bigger than the competition. Right, let's cover the articulation, shall we? The head on the headmaster can look left and right. We don't really have any up and down motion there. We've got ball jointed shoulders and a bend at the elbow. Coming down to the legs, there's no waist rotation, but we do have forwards and backwards motion on the legs, and we do get a bend at the knee, albeit uh, not a huge bend. It actually bends backwards further than it does forwards. Uh, but that's pretty much all we're going to get with this guy. Uh, for a headmaster, he's pretty detailed, uh, but it does what it needs to do. When he is attached in head mode, the head can look left and right. We don't really get any up and down here. There's more of a nod there. Uh, mine does tend to pop out if I try and knock it back too far. It is spring-loaded, and I think the magnets come into play there. Uh, my biggest gripe and worry was this face sculpt being too wide, but having it in person, it doesn't actually look anywhere near as remotely wide, in my opinion. In fact, it's actually pretty in keeping with the bulk of this figure. Coming down to the arms. The butterfly section here can actually move outwards, but it's designed to come across and tab inwards. The shoulders can go up and down, rotate on a lovely ratchet joint there. We get not one, but two-ish <laughs> joints at the elbow. It's a nice looking elbow joint as well, nothing untoward there. The actual joint itself disappears inside there, which is always a nice touch. We get a rotation at both the upper and lower bicep. Again, that's nice to have that included. When we come to the wrists and fists, we get standard KFC style hands, which can fully rotate. We have ball jointed fingers and a ball jointed thumb. Thumb has one additional point of articulation and each finger has two additional points of articulation and they can also be spread. See, so there's plenty of range on this shoulder, but I don't like uh, having that shoulder opened up like that because it does reveal a very large gap on the inside there. I'd prefer to bring that around, use the front of the shoulder, and then adjust this forearm using those rotation points. Coming down to the waist. The waist is on a ratchet joint. Very tight ratchet, but it does move nicely. Nonetheless, the leg sections uh, can be brought forward with the skirts, and the skirts actually tilt. Now that is a very nice touch. I like that a lot. Bring that forward. We have a joint move forwards on a soft ratchet. 
we can come out to the side on a stiffer ratchet. We get a rotation on the upper thigh. Rotation is a friction joint, maybe a little bit loose there. Uh, I don't know if that's going to affect the stability, the stability of the toy at all. It shouldn't do. Um, like I say, it's just a rotation. Uh, most of the weight and distribution is all balanced on these ratchet joints. The ratchets themselves uh, probably could do with an extra click. That's quite a wide stance. Would have liked something about there. But we make do, coming down to the knees, very tight joints on that knee. There is a nice pivot on the foot. It's ball mounted so we can get some up and down motion as well. Now, he is very backpack heavy, so I'm just seeing uh, what his stability is like. Uh, the further he goes back, the more likely he is to topple over. Uh, the joints can only go so far, um, but I mean, if, if you click these joints up to a normal stance, I mean, he's not going to fall over at any time. He's got really good stability. Nice. Uh, now, depending on what you really want to do with Ape Face, <laughs> he can be pretty well balanced. If anything, I'd like the ball joints in the feet to be tighter. And so there's not quite as much freedom in there, but I mean, look, that, that's pretty good. Right now, high kicking apes aside, let's get him transformed up. Let's start with the jet mode. You want to come around to this back kibble section, and it's actually tabbed in at three places. It's tabbed in here, and these two retaining tabs at the bottom. Lovely uh, gold detailing on the inside there, and we get the first glimpse of his ape face as well. You want to extend this section, bring the nose cone section up, and that's going to rock on this joint and slide and tab in like this. Two hinges here, we've got this one here, and we've got the one at the end here. What you want to do, you want to rotate this end hinge so that this wing section rotates round, and then we can just pull out and fully extend those wings like we did in the flying robot mode. Untab this front section here, that's tabbed in very firmly. Now when we go back to robot mode, make sure you tab this section in extremely firmly and as tight as it will go because it holds all of these leg sections into place. Move this butt flap section up a tad and then we can just split these legs outwards with the legs spread like so. You want to flip this section here, that needs to come up so it's on the inside there. We want to open up these sections here and then we can bring this over and there's this tab here, tab here, and that can tab in on both sides. Grabbing the upper torso and the lower torso, you want to just give them a tug and we can actually extend this whole section. Just disengage this section here, slide these shoulder sections up like so, collapse them at the top and at the bottom so the toes sit either side of here. Pressing the tab here we can also push and collapse these legs in. Make sure that this arm section is brought across and then tabbed in to the now lower shoulder section. Bring this section in and there's the section on the toe that's just going to slide in. This section We'll slide all the way across, it tabs in at the base section here, and then we can just tab this section in, moving <laughs> that out of the way, and that's going to tab in to the side of the leg, like that. You want to bring the legs out and extend them on that super tight ratchet. Love again that uh, detailing on that. Rotate the hands and Place the fingers, so in the downward position, the thumb needs to be sat downwards. And these are going to fold inside the flaps on the forearms. And just be careful when you plug that in. Make sure the fingers are straight. And we bring this section up, and that's going to tab in. We can bring this section down. If we look at these sections here, there's a tab on there. That's going to correspond with this section here and just tab that in and make sure that the monkey ape hand things are facing upwards. We can then rotate the ape's feet 180 degrees so they now sit 
underneath the rear end. Bring the top jet section over and just unflip these tab sections and they're going to come down and they're going to locate with the lower jet and we can just push and tab those into place locking that in and if you look to the side section here you've got these two sections here they are going to tab and locate either side of those leg sections we can then bring up the landing gear and lock that into place both on the back and on the front. Plug the wing lightning shield section in and the guns into the tabs on the rear of those fist sections. Something I was really looking forward to showing you involved the CR2025 batteries. Apparently there's a new rule in my household if it's marked up as this is daddy's battery uh, that gives everybody equal right to use them. <laughs> my son's used all of my batteries. So uh, basically when you lift the cockpit section up, all of this lit up. It was an LED, it was awesome. And I took the batteries out because I didn't like storing them in there and they've been, they've been used. Um, yeah. Thank you, Samuel. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Uh, we can bring our pilot in and we can just uh, tuck him in. Add the cockpit section there and we can close that off. And we can also come round to the rear end here and we can put some nice flame effects on the inside there and we can bring out our display stand and that just plugs in on the underside like so and here we have smoke screen and chrome dome just to give you an idea of scale i really like the jet mode it's a very nice homage to the original toy i like the fact we can add these wings and gun sections on the fire thrusters at the back is a nice little touch i absolutely love the cockpit and the led function i'm just so sorry i couldn't show that off in this video and uh, like I said, this is actually one of my favorite modes. And for those of you that want a slightly sleeker look, you can actually mount the guns on the underside of this wing section as well, giving it a much more kind of seeker-esque vibe. Now from here, I'm gonna transform him up into ape mode. And for now, I'm gonna detach all of the added accessories. These really do pay in extremely hard. Right, first port of action, you want to come around to the underside. You want to decompress all of the landing gear. Come to the tab sections that we brought over and tabbed in. And you want to ah, pull those back up and untab them. Oh, God, they're tight. Untab these tabs here. Unlock these arm sections and rotate them 90 degrees. Now we're going to have to rotate this section at the top here. Uh, just move this out of the way for now because we need to bring this section outwards, bring that out to the side like so. Rotate the waist 180 degrees around. Collapse the torso but not all the way, it collapses kind of halfway. You've still got this section here showing. Flip these sections up. So they are like this and rotate the jet nose cone 180 degrees, bringing it back round. With the nose cone section folded over and in this direction, we can then rotate the arms around. Pulling this section up, make sure that the bend is facing inwards. And then holding the bend, you want to rotate the outer section so that this tab section is now facing down. We can now bend this and plug this in to this tab section on here. That's just going to come in and that's going to tab in on there, securing that into place. And then you can just collapse this section on top of those arms and come around to the shin sections and rotate them so that the wheel section is kind of in line with this corner tab here. And then we can collapse this section back down. If we take a nice close look at this section here, there's actually a peg which can be flipped upwards like so. And then we can bring these 
backwards and there's a hole just inside the foot there that's just going to come backwards and we're just going to press and secure this firmly into place like that. Then once you bring these shoulder sections back round and once it's clear it kind of retains by this tab here and we can kind of collapse these sections back off for now. And these red sections here fold up and just tab in there to help secure this section into place. By pulling back the wing sections, we can reveal the fists. They just pull out and extend to form these eight hands. Once the fist section is out, we can then accordion this section back up just by folding it over, over again, again, and round to the side of the arm. Slide the ape's legs back up. Bring the ape feet down on the base there. We also get a nice little heel spur section that we can flip out if you have <laughs> nails. Open up these triangle sections on here. And this section can now rock backwards. And that sits on there like so, closing off that top section. We can then bring in our headmaster, lift this section forwards. I just find it easier to do so just to plug the ape head inwards. Once that's plugged firmly in, ah, there we go. We can then tab this section back on again, like so. And there is the ape head. We can then bring those big ape shoulders forward. And here we have him transformed up into his ape mode. This personally is my favorite of all three. This is how I remember him from when I was a kid. Uh, I just think this is one of his very best looks. Let's just take a look at the side view. It's nice and tidy, nice and compact. Uh, from the back there, everything tabs in. Fully. And yes, we can plug his head into his butt. <laughs> uh, we have lots of different options for posability on this guy as well. Uh, you can bring the knuckles down. So he has hands are on the knuckles. We have joints at the wrists. We have rotation up here. Uh, we have the bend there. We can bring the thumb round. So there's one, two, three. We can bring the arms out. We can bring them forwards and backwards. The head can rotate left and right. We can have the jaw open and close. Uh, we don't have any waist rotation in there, but we do have the chance to move the legs there. We can move the legs outwards and inwards. This section here can bend forwards and backwards independently. And again, we have some forwards and backwards ratcheting on the hind legs. And uh, we get a tilt on those as well. And of course we do actually get a pinned foot, but it can rotate and collapse nonetheless. See, some people really don't like this ape mode, but I honestly do think it's one of his strongest modes. It's just so nostalgic. Now, of course, we do also get the option to attach the jet tail wings. They can be plugged into the back of this ape mode. Again, as before, it's kind of a super mode for him. I'm not as big a fan of this as I am with it in his jet mode but it's still nice to have that option included. Uh, so what do you all think? Uh, what's your favorite mode? Have KFC done a good job? Have they delivered? Uh, as far as quality goes, I've had no issues. Uh, none of the joints appear to be loose. Uh, there seems to be no balance issues there at all. Uh, Size-wise, this is how I'm going to have him displayed. Uh, he looks great with vehicles, uh, other beasts. Uh, I don't know what what's their what do they class as? They're they're all, oh, they're not like terracons. They're uh, headmasters, but they're kind of non-realistic. I don't know, but you get the point. He looks great with other bots. It's just a very good all-round figure. Uh, my only concerns were maybe that rotation in the thighs in robot mode. 
But other than that, very happy, very pleased with how he balances, very pleased with how all of the joints work. There's a lot of ratchets in there. Now, I personally didn't have any problems with Didka, as I showed on my Facebook page. I had no problems with his balance at all, but he was a pre-production sample, and apparently that didn't carry across to all of the actual production samples, hence the need to release a new kit to fix that fault. Uh, hopefully there shouldn't be any problems with this guy at all. I can only review what I have in front of me. And what I have in front of me is a very good, very well thought out, triple changing monkey gorilla jet guy. And it is awesome. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, share it, and of course, subscribe. Until next time from myself and the EA VI Phase 9A Gorilla Warfare King Gorilla, goodbye.